Sexual slavery and sexual exploitation is attaching the right of ownership over one or more persons with the intent of coercing or otherwise forcing them to engage in one or more sexual activities. This includes forced labor, reducing a person to a servile status including forced marriage and sex trafficking persons, such as the sexual trafficking of children. Sexual slavery may also involve single owner sexual slavery, ritual slavery, sometimes associated with certain religious practices, such as ritual servitude in Ghana, Togo and Benin, slavery for primarily non-sexual purposes but where non-consensual sexual activity is common, or forced prostitution. Concubinage was a traditional form of sexual slavery in many cultures, in which women spent their lives in sexual servitude. In some cultures, concubines and their children had distinct rights and legitimate social positions. The Vienna Declaration and Program of Action calls for an international effort to eradicate sexual slavery as an abuse of human rights. The incidence of sexual slavery by country has been studied and tabulated by UNESCO, with the cooperation of various international agencies. Definitions The Rome Statute 1998, which defines the crimes over which the International Criminal Court may have jurisdiction encompasses crimes against humanity Article 7, which include Enslavement, Article 7.1.c, and sexual enslavement, Article 7.1.g. When committed as part of a widespread or systematic attack directed against any civilian population, it also defines sexual enslavement as a war crime and a breach of the Geneva Conventions when committed during an international armed conflict, Article 8 b XXII, and indirectly in an internal armed conflict under Article 8 c e. But the court's jurisdiction over war crimes is explicitly excluded from including crimes committed during situations of internal disturbances and tensions, such as riots, isolated and sporadic acts of violence, or other acts of a similar nature. Article 8, d. The text of the Rome Statute does not explicitly define sexual enslavement, but does define enslavement as the exercise of any or all of the powers attaching to the right of ownership over a person and includes the exercise of such power in the course of trafficking in persons, in particular women and children. Article 7.2.c. In the Commentary on the Rome Statute, Mark Clamberg states, Sexual slavery is a particular form of enslavement which includes limitations on one's autonomy, freedom of movement and power to decide matters relating to one's sexual activity. Thus, the crime also includes forced marriages, domestic servitude or other forced labor that ultimately involves forced sexual activity. In contrast to the crime of rape, which is a completed offense, sexual slavery constitutes a continuing offense. Forms of sexual slavery can, for example, be practices such as the detention of women in rape camps or comfort stations, forced temporary marriages to soldiers and other practices involving the treatment of women as chattel, and as such, violations of the peremptory norm prohibiting slavery. <laughs> Topic. Type Topic. Commercial sexual exploitation of adults Commercial sexual exploitation of adults often referred to as sex trafficking is a type of human trafficking involving the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring or receipt of people, by coercive or abusive means for the purpose of sexual exploitation. Commercial sexual exploitation is not the only form of human trafficking and estimates vary as to the percentage of human trafficking which is for the purpose of transporting someone into sexual slavery. The BBC News cited a report by UNODC as listing the most common destinations for victims of human trafficking in 2007 as Thailand, Japan, Israel, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, Italy, Turkey and the US. The report lists Thailand, China, Nigeria, Albania, Bulgaria, Belarus, Moldova and Ukraine as major sources of traffic persons. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Commercial sexual exploitation of children. 
Commercial sexual exploitation of children includes child prostitution or child sex trafficking, child sex tourism, child pornography, or other forms of transactional sex with children. The Youth Advocate Program International describes CSEC as a form of coercion and violence against children and a contemporary form of slavery. A declaration of the World Congress against the commercial sexual exploitation of children, held in Stockholm in 1996, defines CSEC as sexual abuse by the adult and remuneration in cash or in kind to the child or to a third person or persons. The child is treated as a sexual object and as a commercial object. <inaudible> child prostitution Child prostitution, or child sex trafficking, is a form of sexual slavery. It is the commercial sexual exploitation of children, in which a child performs the services of prostitution, usually for the financial benefit of an adult. India's federal police said in 2009 that they believed around 1.2 million children in India to be involved in prostitution. A CBI statement said that studies and surveys sponsored by the Ministry of Women and Child Development estimated about 40% of India's prostitutes to be children. Thailand's Health System Research Institute reported that children in prostitution make up 40% of prostitutes in Thailand. In some parts of the world, child prostitution is tolerated or ignored by the authorities. Reflecting an attitude which prevails in many developing countries, a judge from Honduras said, on condition of anonymity, if the victim the child prostitute is older than 12, if he or she refuses to file a complaint and if the parents clearly profit from their child's commerce, we tend to look the other way. <laughs> child sex tourism Child sex tourism is a form of child sex trafficking, and is mainly centered on buying and selling children into sexual slavery. It is when an adult travels to a foreign country for the purpose of engaging in commercially facilitated child sexual abuse. Child sex tourism results in both mental and physical consequences for the exploited children, that may include disease including HIV, AIDS, drug addiction, pregnancy, malnutrition, social ostracism, and possibly death. According to the State Department of the United States, Thailand, Cambodia, India, Brazil and Mexico have been identified as leading hotspots of child sexual exploitation. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Child pornography. Child pornography, sometimes referred to as child abuse images, refers to images or films depicting sexually explicit activities involving a child. As such, child pornography is often a visual record of child sexual abuse. Abuse of the child occurs during the sexual acts which are photographed in the production of child pornography, and the effects of the abuse on the child and continuing into maturity are compounded by the wide distribution and lasting availability of the photographs of the abuse. Child sex trafficking often involves child pornography. Children are commonly purchased and sold for sexual purposes without the parents knowing. In these cases, children are often used to produce child pornography, especially sadistic forms of child pornography where they may be tortured. Topic: <laughs> Forced prostitution. Most, if not all, forms of forced prostitution may be viewed as a kind of sexual slavery. The terms forced prostitution and enforced prostitution appear in international and humanitarian conventions but have been insufficiently understood and inconsistently applied. Forced prostitution generally refers to conditions of control over a person who is coerced by another to engage in sexual activity. The issue of consent in prostitution is hotly debated. Opinion in places such as Europe has been divided over the question of whether prostitution should be considered as a free choice or as inherently exploitative of women. The law in Sweden, Norway and Iceland, where it is illegal to pay for sex, but not to sell sexual services, is based on the notion that all forms of prostitution are inherently exploitative, opposing the notion that prostitution can be voluntary. In contrast, prostitution is a recognized profession in countries such as the Netherlands and Germany. 
In 1949 the UN General Assembly adopted the Convention for the Suppression of the Traffic in Persons and of the Exploitation of the Prostitution of Others the 1949 Convention. The 1949 Convention supersedes a number of earlier conventions that covered some aspects of forced prostitution. Signatories are charged with three obligations under the 1949 Convention, prohibition of trafficking, specific administrative and enforcement measures, and social measures aimed at traffic persons. The 1949 Convention presents two shifts in perspective of the trafficking problem in that it views prostitutes as victims of the procurers, and in that it eschews the terms, white slave traffic, and women, using for the first time race and gender neutral language. Article 1 of the 1949 Convention provides punishment for any person who p procures, entices or leads away, for purposes of prostitution, another person, or e exploits the prostitution of another person, even with the consent of that person. To fall under the provisions of the 1949 Convention, the trafficking need not cross international lines. Forced marriage A forced marriage is a marriage where one or both participants are married, without their freely given consent. Forced marriage is a form of sexual slavery. Causes for forced marriages include customs such as bride price and dowry, poverty, the importance given to female premarital virginity, family honor. The fact that marriage is considered in certain communities a social arrangement between the extended families of the bride and groom, limited education and economic options, perceived protection of cultural or religious traditions, assisting immigration. Forced marriage is most common in parts of South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. <laughs> Crime against humanity The Rome Statute Explanatory Memorandum, which defines the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court, recognizes rape, sexual slavery, forced prostitution, forced pregnancy, forced sterilization, or any other form of sexual violence of comparable gravity, as crime against humanity if the action is part of a widespread or systematic practice. Sexual slavery was first recognized as a crime against humanity when the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia issued arrest warrants based on the Geneva Conventions and violations of the laws or customs of war. Specifically, it was recognized that Muslim women in Foka southeastern Bosnia and Herzegovina were subjected to systematic and widespread gang rape, torture and sexual enslavement by Bosnian Serb soldiers, policemen, and members of paramilitary groups after the takeover of the city in April 1992. The indictment was of major legal significance and was the first time that sexual assaults were investigated for the purpose of prosecution under the rubric of torture and enslavement as a crime against humanity. The indictment was confirmed by a 2001 verdict by the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia that rape and sexual enslavement are crimes against humanity. This ruling challenged the widespread acceptance of rape and sexual enslavement of women as intrinsic part of war. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia found three Bosnian Serb men guilty of rape of Bosniak Bosnian Muslim women and girls, some as young as 12 and 15 years of age, in Foka, eastern Bosnia and Herzegovina. The charges were brought as crimes against humanity and war crimes. Furthermore, two of the men were found guilty of the crime against humanity of sexual enslavement for holding women and girls captive in a number of de facto detention centers. Many of the women had subsequently disappeared. In areas controlled by Islamic militants, non Muslim women are enslaved in occupied territories. Many Islamists see the abolition of slavery as forced upon Muslims by the West and want to revive the practice of slavery. See, slavery in 21st century Islamism. <laughs> Bride kidnapping and raptio Bride kidnapping, also known as marriage by abduction or marriage by captive, is a form of forced marriage practiced in some traditional cultures. Bride kidnapping has reportedly occurred in countries spanning Central Asia, the Caucasus region, parts of Africa, and among the Hmong in Southeast Asia, the Zeltal in Mexico, and the Romani in Europe. 
Though the motivations behind bride kidnapping vary by region, the cultures with traditions of marriage by abduction are generally patriarchal with a strong social stigma against sex or pregnancy outside marriage and illegitimate births. In most cases, however, the men who resort to capturing a wife are often of lower social status, whether because of poverty, disease, poor character or criminality. In some cases, the couple collude together to elope under the guise of a bride kidnapping, presenting their parents with a fate accompli. These men are sometimes deterred from legitimately seeking a wife because of the payment the woman's family expects, the bride price not to be confused with a dowry, paid by the woman's family. Bride kidnapping is distinguished from raptio in that the former refers to the abduction of one woman by one man and or his friends and relatives, and is often a widespread and ongoing practice. The latter refers to the large-scale abduction of women by groups of men, most frequently in a time of war see also war rape. The Latin term raptio refers to abduction of women, either for marriage by kidnapping or elopement or enslavement particularly sexual slavery. In Roman Catholic canon law, raptio refers to the legal prohibition of matrimony if the bride was abducted forcibly canon 1089 CIC. The practice of raptio is surmised to have existed since anthropological antiquity. In Neolithic Europe, excavation of a linear pottery culture site at Aspern Schletz, Austria, unearthed the remains of numerous slain victims. Among them, young adult females and children were clearly underrepresented, suggesting that perhaps the attackers had killed the men but abducted the young females. Topic: <laughs> During armed conflict and war. Rape and sexual violence have accompanied warfare in virtually every known historical era. Before the 19th century, military circles supported the notion that all persons, including unarmed women and children, were still the enemy, with the belligerent nation or person engaged in conflict having conquering rights over them. To the victor goes the spoils, has been a war cry for centuries and women were included as part of the spoils of war. Institutionalized sexual slavery and enforced prostitution have been documented in a number of wars, most notably the Second World War see hashtag during the Second World War and in the war in Bosnia. <laughs> <laughs> Historical cases <laughs> Ancient. Ancient Greece and Roman Empire Employing female and occasionally male slaves for prostitution was common in the Hellenistic and Roman world. Ample references exist in literature, law, military reports and art. A prostitute slave or free existed outside the moral codex restricting sexuality in Greco-Roman society and enjoyed little legal protection. See Ancient Rome's Law on Rape as an example. Male intercourse with a slave was not considered adultery by either society. Asia During the Chinese domination of Vietnam, Vietnamese girls were sold as sex slaves to the Chinese. A large trade developed where the native girls of Vietnam were enslaved and brought north to the Chinese. Southern Yu girls were sexually eroticized in Chinese literature and in poems written by Chinese who were exiled to the South. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Portuguese visitors and their South Asian Lasker and sometimes African crew members often engaged in slavery in Japan, where they bought or captured young Japanese women and girls, who were either used as sexual slaves on their ships or taken to Macau and other Portuguese colonies in Southeast Asia, the Americas, and India. For example, in Goa, a Portuguese colony in India, there was a community of Japanese slaves and traders during the late 16th and 17th centuries, during the 1662 siege of Fort Zeelandia in which Chinese Ming loyalist forces commanded by Koxinga besieged and defeated the Dutch East India Company and conquered Taiwan, the Chinese took Dutch women and children prisoner. The Dutch missionary Antonius Hambroke, two of his daughters, and his wife were among the Dutch prisoners of war with Koxinga. Koshinga sent Hambroke to Fort Zeelandia demanding he persuade them to surrender or else Hambroke would be killed when he returned. Hambroke returned to the fort, where two of his other daughters were. He urged the fort not to surrender, and returned to Koshinga's camp. 
He was then executed by decapitation, and in addition to this, a rumor was spreading among the Chinese that the Dutch were encouraging the native Taiwan aboriginals to kill Chinese, so Koxinga ordered the mass execution of Dutch male prisoners in retaliation, in addition to a few women and children also being killed. The surviving Dutch women and children were then turned into slaves. Koshinga took Hembroke's teenage daughter as a concubine, and Dutch women were sold to Chinese soldiers to become their wives. The Daily Journal of the Dutch Fort recorded that, The best were preserved for the use of the commanders, and then sold to the common soldiers. Happy was she that fell to the lot of an unmarried man, being thereby freed from vexations by the Chinese women, who are very jealous of their husbands. In 1684, some of these Dutch wives were still captives of the Chinese. Some Dutch physical looks like auburn and red hair among people in regions of South Taiwan are a consequence of this episode of Dutch women becoming concubines to the Chinese commanders. The Chinese took Dutch women as slave concubines and wives and they were never freed. In 1684 some were reported to be living. In Kamoya a Dutch merchant was contacted with an arrangement to release the prisoners which was proposed by a son of Koshingas but it came to nothing. The Chinese officers used the Dutch women they received as concubines. The Dutch women were used for sexual pleasure by Koshinga's commanders. This event of Dutch women being distributed to the Chinese soldiers and commanders was recorded in the Daily Journal of the Fort. A teenage daughter of the Dutch missionary Anthonius Hambroke became a concubine to Koshinga. She was described by the Dutch commander Caeuw as a very sweet and pleasing maiden. Dutch language accounts record this incident of Chinese taking Dutch women as concubines and the date of Hambroke's daughter in the 19th and early 20th centuries. There was a network of Chinese prostitutes trafficked to cities like Singapore, and a separate network of Japanese prostitutes being trafficked across Asia, in countries such as China, Japan, Korea, Singapore, and British India, in what was then known as the Yellow Slave Traffic. There was also a network of prostitutes from continental Europe being trafficked to India, Ceylon, Singapore, China and Japan at around the same time, in what was then known as the white slave traffic. Karayuki San, Tang Xing Kizan literally, Ms. Gone to China, but actually meaning Ms. Gone Abroad, were Japanese girls and women in the late 19th and early 20th centuries who were trafficked from poverty-stricken agricultural prefectures in Japan to destinations in East Asia, Southeast Asia, Siberia Russian Far East, Manchuria, and British India to serve as prostitutes and sexually serviced men from a variety of races, including Chinese, Europeans, native Southeast Asians, and others. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, there was a network of Japanese prostitutes being trafficked across Asia, in countries such as China, Japan, Korea, Singapore and British India, in what was then known as the «yellow slave traffic». The main destinations of Karayuki San included China particularly Shanghai, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Borneo, Sumatra, Thailand, Indonesia, and the western USA in particular San Francisco. They were often sent to western colonies in Asia where there was a strong demand from western military personnel and Chinese men. The experience of Japanese prostitutes in China was written about in a book by a Japanese woman, Tomoko Yamazaki. Japanese girls were easily trafficked abroad since Korean and Chinese ports did not require Japanese citizens to use passports and the Japanese government realized that money earned by the Karayuki San helped the Japanese economy since it was being remitted, and the Chinese boycott of Japanese products in 1919 led to reliance on revenue from the Karayuki San. Since the Japanese viewed non-Westerners as inferior, the Karayuki San Japanese women felt humiliated since they mainly sexually served Chinese men or native Southeast Asians. Borneo natives, Malaysians, Chinese, Japanese, French, American, British and men from every race utilized the Japanese prostitutes of Sandakan. A Japanese woman named Osaki said that the men, Japanese, Chinese, whites, and natives, were dealt with alike by the prostitutes regardless of race, and that a Japanese prostitute's most disgusting customers were Japanese men, while they used kind enough to describe Chinese men, and the English and Americans were the second best clients, while the native men were the best and fastest to have sex with. During World War II, Empire of Japan organized a governmental system of comfort women, 
which is a euphemism of military sex slaves for the estimated 200,000, mostly Korean, Chinese, and Filipino women who were forced into sexual slavery in Japanese military. Comfort stations during World War II, Japan collected, carried, and confined Asian ladies coercively and collusively to have sexual intercourse with Japan soldiers during their invasions across East Asia and Southeast Asia. Some Korean women claim that these cases should be judged by an international tribunal as child sex violence. The legal demand has been made because of the victim's anger at what they see as the inequity of the existing legal measures and the denial of Japan's involvement in child sex slavery and kidnapping. On 28 December 2015, Japan and South Korea agreed that Japan would pay 1 billion yen into a fund for a memorial hall of comfort women. Despite this agreement, some Korean victims have complained that they were not consulted during the negotiation process. They demand that Japan and Korea did not seek both the legal recognition of their claim and the revision of Japanese history textbooks. <laughs> Arab slave trade Slave trade, including trade of sex slaves, fluctuated in certain regions in the Middle East up until the 20th century. These slaves came largely from Sub-Saharan Africa mainly Zanj, the Caucasus mainly Circassians, Central Asia mainly Sogdians, and Central and Eastern Europe mainly Sakaliba. The Barbary pirates also captured 1.25 million slaves from Western Europe between the 16th and 19th centuries, in contrast to the Atlantic slave trade where the male-female ratio was 2 to 1 or 3 to 1. The Arab slave trade usually had a higher female-male ratio instead, suggesting a general preference for female slaves. Concubinage and reproduction served as incentives for importing female slaves, often European, though many were also imported mainly for performing household tasks. White slavery In English-speaking countries in the 19th and early 20th centuries, the phrase, "'white slavery' was used to refer to sexual enslavement of white women. It was particularly associated with accounts of women enslaved in Middle Eastern harems, such as the so-called Circassian beauties. The phrase gradually came to be used as a euphemism for prostitution. The phrase was especially common in the context of the exploitation of minors, with the implication that children and young women in such circumstances were not free to decide their own fates. In Victorian Britain, campaigning journalist William Thomas Stead, editor of the Pall Mall Gazette, procured a 13-year-old girl for £5, an amount then equal to a labourer's monthly wage see the Eliza Armstrong case. Moral panic over the traffic in women rose to a peak in England in the 1880s. At the time, white slavery was a natural target for defenders of public morality and crusading journalists. The ensuing outcry led to the passage of anti-slavery legislation in Parliament. Parliament passed the 1885 Criminal Law Amendment Act, raising the age of consent from 13 to 16 in that year. A subsequent scare occurred in the United States in the early 20th century, peaking in 1910, when Chicago's U.S. attorney announced without giving details that an international crime ring was abducting young girls in Europe, importing them, and forcing them to work in Chicago brothels. These claims, and the panic they inflamed, led to the passage of the United States White Slave Traffic Act of 1910, generally known as the Man Act. It also banned the interstate transport of females for immoral purposes. Its primary intent was to address prostitution and immorality. Immigration inspectors at Ellis Island in New York City were held responsible for questioning and screening European prostitutes from the U.S. Immigration inspectors expressed frustration at the ineffectiveness of questioning in determining if a European woman was a prostitute, and claimed that many were lying and framing skillful responses to their questions. They were also accused of negligence should they accept a fictitious address from an immigrant or accept less than complete responses. Inspector Helen Bullis investigated several homes of assignment in the Tenderloin District of New York, and found brothels existed in the early 20th century in New York City. She compiled a list of houses of prostitutes, their proprietors, and their inmates. The New York Inspection Director wrote a report in 1907, defending against accusations of negligence, saying there was no sense to the public panic, and he was doing everything he could to screen European immigrants for prostitution, especially unmarried ones. 
In a report by the Commissioner General of Immigration in 1914, the Commissioner said that many prostitutes would intentionally marry American men to secure citizenship. He said that for prostitutes, it was, "...no difficult task to secure a disreputable citizen who will marry a prostitute." from Europe. Americas As early as the 1490s, Christopher Columbus established trade in sex slaves on Hispaniola which included sex slaves as young as nine years old. Within 25 years of being colonized, the population of Hispaniola natives declined, dying from enslavement, massacre or disease. From the beginning of African slavery in the North American colonies, white men took enslaved African women as concubines or occasional mistresses. As populations increased, slave women might be taken advantage of by white overseers, planters' younger sons before they married, and other white men associated with the slaveholders. Some were sold into brothels outright. Placage, a formalized system of concubinage among slave women or free people of color, developed in Louisiana and particularly New Orleans by the 18th century. Young mixed-race women considered highly desirable would receive a dowry or property as part of an associated settlement negotiated by their mothers with white men. The fathers would often pay for education of their mixed-race children born of these unions, especially sons, who might be educated in France and enter the army. In recent years, at least three historians viz. Kenneth Slaxon, Emily Clark, and Carol Schluter have challenged the historicity of quadroon balls and have referred to the institution of placage as a myth. But Paul Heineg's research showed that most mixed-race, free black families in the censuses of 1790–1810 were descended from unions between free white women and African men, whether free, indentured servant or slave, that took place in colonial Virginia. It had half the slaves in the colonies at the time of the Revolution. In the early colonial years, the working class of indentured servants and slaves often worked and lived together. From the 17th century, Virginia and other colonies passed laws determining the social status of children born in the colonies. Under English common law in England, children of two English subjects took the status of the father. But Africans were never considered English subjects. To settle the issue of the status of children born in the colony, Virginia passed a law in 1662 that ruled that children would take the status of their mother at birth, under the Roman legal principle known as partus sequitur ventrum. Thus all children born to enslaved mothers were legally slaves, regardless of the paternity or ancestry of their fathers. They were bound for life and could be sold like any slave unless formally freed. The term, white slaves was sometimes used for those mixed-race or mulatto slaves who had a visibly high proportion of European ancestry. Among the most notable at the turn of the 19th century was Sally Hemings, who was three-quarters white and believed by historians to be a half-sister of Martha Wales Skelton Jefferson by their common father John Wales. Hemings is known for having four surviving children from her decades-long concubinage with President Thomas Jefferson, they were seven-eighths European by ancestry. Three of these mixed-race children passed easily into white society as adults Jefferson freed them all, two informally and two in his will. Three of his Hemings grandsons served as white men in the Union Regular Army in the American Civil War. John Wales Jefferson advanced to the rank of colonel. Not all white fathers abandoned their slave children, some provided them with education, apprenticeships, or capital, some wealthy planters sent their mixed-race children to the North for education and sometimes for freedom. Some men freed both their slave mistresses and their mixed-race children, especially in the twenty years after the American Revolution, but Southern legislatures made such manumissions more difficult. Both Mary Chestnut and Fanny Kemble wrote in the 19th century about the scandal of white men having their mistresses and natural mixed-race children as part of their extended households. Numerous mixed-race families were begun before the Civil War, and many originated in the Upper South. After slaves were emancipated, many states passed anti-miscegenation laws, which prohibited interracial marriage between whites and non-whites. But this did not stop white men from taking sexual advantage of black women by using their social positions of power under the Jim Crow system and white supremacy, or in other parts of the country by ordinary power and wealth dynamics. For instance, in the 20th century future politician Strom Thurmond at age 21 had a sexual relationship with a 16-year-old maid in his parents' household and she became pregnant. He did provide support for their daughter. 
The girl was officially raised by her maternal aunt and uncle, not learning about her biological parents until she was in her late teens. She met Thurmond, but said nothing publicly about her status as his daughter until after Thurmond's death. With his family's agreement, her name has been added as one of his children on his memorial. Zora Neale Hurston wrote about contemporary sexual practices in her anthropological studies in the 1930s of the turpentine camps of North Florida. She noted that white men with power often forced black women into sexual relationships. Although she never named the practice as paramour rights, author C. Arthur Ellis ascribed this term to the fictionalized Hurston in his book, Zora Hurston and the Strange Case of Ruby McCollum. The same character asserted that the death knell of paramour rights was sounded by the trial of Ruby McCollum, a black woman who murdered Dr. C. Leroy Adams, in Live Oak, Florida, in 1952. She said he had forced her into sex and bearing his child. Journalist Hurston covered McCollum's trial in 1952 for the Pittsburgh Courier. McCollum's case was further explored in the 2015 documentary You Belong to Me, Sex, Race and Murder in the South. The Chinese Tonka females were sold from Guangzhou to work as prostitutes for the overseas Chinese male community in the United States. During the California Gold Rush in the late 1840s, Chinese merchants transported thousands of young Chinese girls, including babies, from China to the United States. They sold the girls into sexual slavery within the red light district of San Francisco. Girls could be bought for $40 about $1,104 in 2013 dollars in Guangzhou and sold for $400 about $11,040 in 2013 dollars in the United States. Many of these girls were forced into opium addiction and lived their entire lives as prostitutes. During the Second World War Germany during World War II During World War II, Germany established brothels in Nazi concentration camps The women forced to work in these brothels came from the Ravensbrück concentration camp. Soldiers' brothels were usually organized in already established brothels or in hotels confiscated by the Germans. The leaders of the Wehrmacht became interested in running their own brothels when sexual disease spread among the soldiers. In the controlled brothels, the women were checked frequently to avoid and treat sexually transmittable infections It is estimated that a minimum of 34,140 women from occupied states were forced to work as prostitutes during the Third Reich. In occupied Europe, the local women were often forced into prostitution. On 3 May 1941 the Foreign Ministry of the Polish Government in Exile issued a document describing the mass Nazi raids made in Polish cities with the goal of capturing young women, who later were forced to work in brothels used by German soldiers and officers. Women often tried to escape from such facilities, with at least one mass escape known to have been attempted by women in Norway. <laughs> Japan during World War II. Comfort women are a widely publicized example of sexual slavery. The term refers to the women, from occupied countries, who were forced to serve as sex slaves in the Japanese army's camps during World War II. Estimates vary as to how many women were involved, with numbers ranging from as low as 20,000 from some Japanese scholars to as high as 410,000 from some Chinese scholars. The numbers are still being researched and debated. The majority of women were taken from Korea, China, and other occupied territories part of the Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. They were often recruited by kidnapping or deception to serve as sex slaves. Sometimes women were raped to the point of death, or killed by torture, such as having their breasts sliced off or having their abdomens slit open. Each slave was reportedly raped. An average of 10 rapes per day considered by some to be a low estimate, for a five-day work week, this figure can be extrapolated to estimate that each comfort girl was raped around 50 times per week or 2,500 times per year. For three years of service, the average, a comfort girl would have been raped 7,500 times. 
Parker, 1995 United Nations Commissions on Human Rights Chuo University professor Yoshiaki Yoshimi states there were about 2,000 centers where as many as 200,000 Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Filipino, Taiwanese, Burmese, Indonesian, Dutch and Australian women were interned and used as sex slaves. After World War II Topic. Japan The Recreation and Amusement Association, Tei Shu Wei and Shi Shi Shie Wei Tokushu Ian Shisetsu Kyoke Special Comfort Facility Association RAA, was the largest of the organizations established by the Japanese government to provide organized prostitution and other leisure facilities for occupying Allied troops immediately following World War II. The RAA established its first brothel on 28 August, the Komishian in Omori. By December 1945, the RAA owned 34 facilities, 16 of which were comfort stations. The total number of prostitutes employed by the RAA amounted to 55,000 at its peak. The dispersal of prostitution made it harder for GHQ to control STIs and also caused an increase in rapes by GIs, from an average of 40 a day before the SCAP order to an estimated 330 per days immediately after. During the Korean War During the Korean War, the South Korean military institutionalized a special comfort unit, similar to the one used by the Japanese military during World War II, kidnapping and pressing several North Korean women into sexual slavery. Until recently, very little was known about this apart from testimonies of retired generals and soldiers who had fought in the war. In February 2002, Korean sociologist Kim Kwiok wrote the first scholarly work on Korea's comfort women through official records. The South Korean comfort system was organized around three operations. First, there were special comfort units called Tuksu Wayande, Toigsuande Tae Shu Wei, and Dewey, which operated from seven different stations. Second, there were mobile units of comfort women that visited barracks. Third, there were prostitutes who worked in private brothels that were hired by the military. Although it is still not clear how recruitment of these comfort women were organized in the South, South Korean agents were known to have kidnapped some of the women from the North. According to anthropologist Chung Hee Sarah Soh, the South Korean military's use of comfort women has produced virtually no societal response, despite the country's women's movement support for Korean comfort women within the Japanese military. Both Kim and SOH argue that this system is a legacy of Japanese colonialism, as many of Korea's army leadership were trained by the Japanese military. Both the Korean and Japanese militaries referred to these comfort women as military supplies in official documents and personal memoirs. The South Korean armed forces also used the same arguments as the Japanese military to justify the use of comfort women, viewing them as a necessary social evil. That would raise soldiers' morale and prevent rape. Topic: <inaudible> Present day. Official estimates of individuals in sexual slavery worldwide vary. In 2001, the International Organization for Migration estimated 400,000, the Federal Bureau of Investigation estimated 700,000, and UNICEF estimated 1.75 million. Topic. Africa In Africa the colonial powers abolished slavery in the 19th and 20th centuries. However, in areas outside their jurisdiction, such as the Modest Empire in Sudan, the practice continued to thrive. Institutional slavery has been banned worldwide, but there are numerous reports of women sex slaves in areas without effective government control, such as Sudan, Liberia, Sierra Leone, northern Uganda, Congo, Niger and Mauritania. In Ghana, Togo and Benin, a form of religious prostitution known as trokozi, ritual servitude, forcibly keeps thousands of girls and women in traditional shrines as wives of the gods. Where priests perform the sexual function in place of the gods. In April 2014, Boko Haram kidnapped 276 female students from Chibok, Borno, a state of Nigeria. 
More than 50 of them soon escaped, but the remainder have not been released. Instead Shikau, who has a reward of $7 million offered by the United States Department of State since June 2013 for information leading to his capture, announced his intention of selling them into slavery. Topic Americas The San Francisco Chronicle reported in 2006 that in the 21st century, women, mostly from South America, Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union, are trafficked into the United States for the purposes of sexual slavery. A 2006 ABC News story stated that, contrary to existing misconceptions, American citizens may also be coerced into sex slavery. In 2001, the United States State Department estimated that 50,000 to 100,000 women and girls are trafficked each year into the United States. In 2003, the State Department report estimated that a total of 18,000 to 20,000 individuals were trafficked into the United States for either forced labor or sexual exploitation. The June 2004 report estimated the total trafficked annually at between 14,500 and 17,500. The Bush administration set up 42 Justice Department task forces and spent more than $150 million on attempts to reduce human trafficking. However, in the seven years since the law was passed, the administration has identified only 1,362 victims of human trafficking brought into the United States since 2000, nowhere near the 50,000 or more per year the government had estimated. The Girls Education and Mentoring Services GEMS, an organization based in New York, claims that the majority of girls in the sex trade were abused as children. Poverty and a lack of education play major roles in the lives of many women in the sex industry. According to a report conducted by the University of Pennsylvania, anywhere from 100,000 up to 300,000 American children at any given time may be at risk of exploitation due to factors such as drug use, homelessness, or other factors connected with increased risk for commercial sexual exploitation. However, the report emphasized, the numbers presented in these exhibits do not, therefore, reflect the actual number of cases of CSEC in the United States but, rather, what we estimate to be the number of children at risk of commercial sexual exploitation. The 2010 Trafficking in Persons report described the United States as, a source, transit, and destination country for men, women, and children subjected to trafficking in persons, specifically forced labor, debt bondage, and forced prostitution, sexual slavery in the United States states may occur in multiple forms and in multiple venues. Sex trafficking in the United States may be present in Asian massage parlors, Mexican cantina bars, residential brothels, or street-based pimp-controlled prostitution. The anti-trafficking community in the United States is debating the extent of sexual slavery. Some groups argue that exploitation is inherent in the act of commercial sex, while other groups take a stricter approach to defining sexual slavery, considering an element of force, fraud or coercion to be necessary for sex slavery to exist. The prostitutes in illegal massage parlors may be forced to work out of apartment complexes for many hours a day. Many clients may not realize that some of the women who work in these massage sex parlors have actually been forced into prostitution. The women may initially be lured into the U.S. under false pretenses. In huge debt to their owners, they are forced to earn enough to eventually buy their freedom. In some cases women who have been sex trafficked may be forced to undergo plastic surgery or abortions. A chapter in The Slave Next Door 2009 reports that human trafficking and sexual enslavement are not limited to any specific location or social class. It concludes that individuals in society need to be alert to report suspicious behavior, because the psychological and physical abuse occurs which can often leave a victim unable to escape on their own. In 2000 Congress created the Victims of Trafficking and Violence Protection Act with tougher punishments for sex traffickers. It provides for the possibility for former sex slaves to obtain a T1 visa. To obtain the visa women must prove they were enslaved by force, fraud or coercion. The visa allows former victims of sex trafficking to stay in the United States for three years and then apply for a green card. The Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints FLDS has been suspected of trafficking underage women across state lines, as well as across the U.S. Canada and U.S. Mexico borders, for the purpose of sometimes involuntary plural marriage and sexual abuse. The FLDS is suspected by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police of having trafficked more than 30 underage girls from Canada to the United States between the late 1990s and 2006 to be entered into polygamous marriages. 
RCMP spokesman Dan Moskalik said of the FLDS's activities, "...in essence, it's human trafficking in connection with illicit sexual activity." According to the Vancouver Sun, it's unclear whether or not Canada's anti-human trafficking statute can be effectively applied against the FLDS's pre-2005 activities, because the statute may not be able to be applied retroactively. An earlier three-year-long investigation by local authorities in British Columbia into allegations of sexual abuse, human trafficking, and forced marriages by the FLDS resulted in no charges, but did result in legislative change. Former FLDS members have also alleged that children belonging to the sect were forced to perform sexual acts as children upon older men while being unable to leave. This has been described by numerous former members as sexual slavery, and was reported as such by the Sydney Morning Herald. One former resident of Yearning for Zion, Kathleen Mackert, stated, I was required to perform oral sex on my father when I was seven, and it escalated from there. Topic Asia. Topic Central and West Asia. The Trafficking in Persons Report of 2007 from the U.S. Department of State says that sexual slavery exists in the Arab states of the Persian Gulf, where women and children may be trafficked from the post-Soviet states, Eastern Europe, Far East, Africa, South Asia or other parts of the Middle East. According to media reports from late 2014 the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL was selling Yazidis and Christian women as slaves. According to Halei Esfandiari of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars, after ISIL militants have captured an area, T hey usually take the older women to a makeshift slave market and try to sell them. In mid-October 2014 the UN estimated that 5,000 to 7,000 Yazidi women and children were abducted by ISIL and sold into slavery. In the digital magazine Dabak, ISIL claimed religious justification for enslaving Yazidi women whom they consider to be from a heretical sect. ISIL claimed that the Yazidi are idol worshippers and their enslavement part of the old Sharia practice of spoils of war. ISIL appealed to apocalyptic beliefs and claimed justification by a hadith that they interpret as portraying the revival of slavery as a precursor to the end of the world. In late September 2014, 126 Islamic scholars from around the Muslim world signed an open letter to the Islamic State's leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, rejecting his group's interpretations of the Quran and Hadith to justify its actions. The letter accuses the group of instigating fitna—sedition—by instituting slavery under its rule in contravention of the anti-slavery consensus of the Islamic scholarly community. In late 2014 ISIL released a pamphlet on the treatment of female slaves. In January 2015, further rules for sex slaves were announced. Selling women and children still occurs in the Middle East. Is Islamic State offers women and underage children in a kind of virtual slave market with for sale photos. The transfer of money, as the reporter discovered, takes place through a liaison office in Turkey. Yazidi women have also reported being raped and used as sexual slave by members of ISIS. In November 2015 it was reported that, "...around 2,000 women and girls are still being bought and sold in ISIS-controlled areas. The young become sex slaves and older women are beaten and used as house slaves, according to survivors and accounts from ISIS militants." South Asia In 2007, the Ministry of Women and Child Development estimated that there are around 2.8 million sex workers in India, with 35% of them entering the trade before the age of 18 years. The number of prostitutes has also doubled in the recent decade. One news article states that an estimated 200,000 Nepalese girls have been trafficked to red light areas of India. Nepalese women and girls, especially virgins, are reportedly favoured in India because of their fair skin and young looks. One report estimates that every year between 5,000 and 7,000 Nepalese girls are trafficked into the red light districts in Indian cities, and that many of the girls may only be 9 or 10 years old. In Pakistan, young girls have been sold by their families to big city brothel owners. Often this happens due to poverty or debt, whereby the family has no other way to raise the money than to sell the young girl. 
Cases have also been reported where wives and sisters have been sold to brothels to raise money for gambling, drinking or drug addictions. Sex slaves are reportedly also bought by agents in Afghanistan who trick young girls into coming to Pakistan for well-paying jobs. Once in Pakistan they are taken to brothels called Karabat and forced into sexual slavery, some for many years. Beardless young boys in Afghanistan may be sold as baka bazi for use in dancing and prostitution pederasty, and are sometimes valued in tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> East and Southeast Asia In January 2010, the Supreme Court of India stated that India is becoming a hub for large-scale child prostitution rackets. It suggested setting up of a special investigating agency to tackle the growing problem. An article about the Rescue Foundation in New Internationalist magazine states that, according to Save the Children India, clients now prefer 10 to 12 year old girls. The same article attributes the rising number of prostitutes believed to have contracted HIV in India's brothels as a factor in India becoming the country with the second largest number of people living with HIV AIDS in the world behind South Africa. In Thailand, the Health System Research Institute reported in 2005 that children in prostitution make up 40% of Thailand's prostitutes. It said that a proportion of prostitutes over the age of 18, including foreign nationals mostly from Myanmar, China's Yunnan province, Laos, and Cambodia, are also in some state of forced sexual servitude. In 1996, the police in Bangkok estimated that there were at least 5,000 Russian prostitutes working in Thailand, many of whom had arrived through networks controlled by Russian gangs. The Tourism Police Bureau in 1997 stated that there were 500 Chinese and 200 European women in prostitution in Bangkok, many of whom entered Thailand illegally, often through Burma and Laos. Earlier reports, however, suggest different figures. Police Colonel Sanit Mipon, Deputy Chief of Tourism Police Bureau, Thailand Popular Haunt for Foreign Prostitutes, The Nation, 15 January 1997. Part of the challenge in quantifying and eliminating sexual slavery in Thailand and Asia generally is the high rate of police corruption in the region. There are documented cases where Thai and other area law enforcement officials worked with human traffickers, even to the extent of returning escaped child sex slaves to brothels. Ethnic Rohingya women are kidnapped by Myanmar military and used as sex slave. Many Rohingya women were detained at a human trafficking syndicate transit camp in Padang Besar, Thailand, were treated like sex slaves. Topic. Europe In the Netherlands, the Bureau of the Dutch Rapporteur on Trafficking in Human Beings in 2005 estimated that there are from 1,000 to 7,000 trafficking victims a year. Most police investigations relate to legal sex businesses, with all sectors of prostitution being well represented, but with window brothels being particularly overrepresented. Dutch news site Expatica reported that in 2008, there were 809 registered trafficking victims in the Netherlands, out of those 763 were women and at least 60% of them were reportedly forced to work in the sex industry. Of reported victims, those from Hungary were all female and all forced into prostitution. In Germany, the trafficking of women from Eastern Europe is often organized by people from that same region. German authorities identified 676 sex trafficking victims in 2008, compared with 689 in 2007. The German Federal Police Office BKA reported in 2006 a total of 357 completed investigations of human trafficking, with 775 victims. 35% of the suspects were Germans born in Germany and 8% were German citizens born outside Germany. In Greece, according to NGO estimates in 2008, there may be a total 13,000 to 14,000 trafficking victims of all types in the country at any given time. Major countries of origin for trafficking victims brought into Greece include Nigeria, Ukraine, Russia, Bulgaria, Albania, Moldova, Romania, and Belarus. In Switzerland, the police estimated in 2006 that there may be between 1,500 and 3,000 victims of all types of human trafficking. 
The organizers and their victims generally come from Hungary, Slovakia, Romania, Ukraine, Moldova, Lithuania, Brazil, the Dominican Republic, Thailand and Cambodia, and, to a lesser extent, Africa. In Belgium, in 2007, prosecutors handled a total of 418 trafficking cases, including 219 economic exploitation and 168 sexual exploitation cases. In the same year, the Federal Judicial Police handled 196 trafficking files, compared with 184 in 2006. In 2007 the police arrested 342 persons for smuggling and trafficking-related crimes. A recent report by Risk Monitor Foundation estimated that 70% of the prostitutes who work in Belgium are from Bulgaria. In Austria, Vienna has the largest number of reported trafficking cases, although trafficking is also a problem in urban centers such as Graz, Linz, Salzburg, and Innsbruck. The NGO Latinamerikanische Frauen in Österreich Interventionstelle für Betroffene des Frauenhandels reported assisting 108 victims of all types of human trafficking in 2006, down from 151 in 2005. In Spain, in 2007, officials identified 1,035 sex trafficking victims and 445 labor trafficking victims. See also 1921 International Convention for the Suppression of the Traffic in Women and Children The Bible and Slavery Hashtag Sexual and Conjugal Slavery Child Grooming Comfort Women Forced Marriage Islamic Views on Slavery Hashtag Sexual Intercourse Kipumjo, Sex Slaves of North Korea's Ruler Rape Sexism <laughs>